feel free to send me a, 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 a direct chat and I'm glad to help out in any way that I can. So with that, it is it is 12, 12 and let's get started. Uh, Anne is saying that when she leaves and tries to join, it just gives her the headphones listening option. Well, maybe we can change it once we get her in there. And Josh, no, we can't hear you. Oh, yeah, that, that's me. She might need to try it with a different <laughs> browser. Hannah, maybe, maybe you and I can work on this offline while the presentation gets started. Okay. With that note, I am going to bring in the presentation. Does everyone see a um, slide? Almost. Still loading, for me at least. There we go. Okay, great. Well, hello and welcome to our presentation. I'm Heather Valley, and I'm here with Heather Hands and Hannah Rogers, we hope. We're from Duke University's Learning Innovation Team, and we're going to discuss the development of a new asynchronous communications tool. As the use of online education tools increased to meet the needs of learners during the recent pandemic, some new pain points became apparent. To address an unexpected hole in our teaching technology portfolio, Duke University decided to create a new online discussion platform to facilitate compelling 21st century learning conversations. By leveraging its commitment to learning innovation, dedication to open source, open source software, deep engagement with the Duke community, expertise in user-informed design, and strong partnership with, with Longsight, a trusted education technology vendor, Duke has reached an advanced prototype stage of development on this tool with the goal of piloting it for this coming fall semester. Here is our full team from Duke Learning Innovation, Duke Creative and User Experience, and Longsight. But as you'll see, the range of people providing input is much broader. The recent transition to online education has demonstrated how valuable online conversation is to our learning experiences. Unfortunately, our faculty are not enamored with Sakai's forums tool, so products like Piazza have become increasingly important even before the pandemic. Their use increased dramatically during last year's higher education pivot to online education. When Piazza changed its business model in 2020, we at Duke took the opportunity to evaluate some competitive products like Ed Discussions and CampusWire. At the same time, we began the development of an entirely new discussion tool within Sakai. Our goal is to replace the current discussion forums with a tool designed to better meet our community's needs and facilitate meaningful, compelling learning conversations. In order to transform our current discussion tool, we brought together a wide variety of stakeholders, students, instructors, teaching assistants, LMS administrators, user experience designers, and vendors. We dove deeply into pedagogical research and leveraged modern web development technologies. And we asked our primary users, instructors, and students to provide input and feedback at every stage of the process. This holistic approach to course discussions aims to make them strongly aligned with both user needs and pedagogical best practices. And let's see, yes, uh, now Hannah will dig a bit deeper into the research side of things. Thanks, Heather. Um, I'm Hannah Rogers. Uh, so on the slide that you'll see in just a second, you can see some, but not all of the research categories we explored relating to online discussion. So by exploring topics as diverse as gamification and social media, we sought to gain a holistic understanding of effective online discussions. We centered pedagogical research from the beginning of this process, initially collecting, reviewing, and summarizing about 70 articles. From there, we crafted 42 online discussion design recommendations, directly tied these findings of about, directly tied the findings of about 50 articles. At the heart of every recommendation is the understanding that user experience plays a key part in not just using a tool, but in learning itself. We are in the process of connecting these research recommendations with other forms of data to see where the needs of instructors, graduate students, and undergraduate students align with the findings from teaching and learning scholarship. 
We are currently working with a group of six instructors from across schools and disciplines at Duke who are providing sustained consultation on the process. As we began the process of designing the new discussion tool, we collected user stories from faculty. Once we had our recommendations from pedagogical research, we presented these recommendations to Duke instructors to see what overlapped with their needs and what questions we had not yet asked. Additionally, we have provided faculty with our findings from the undergraduate focus groups that Heather will talk more about in a moment and asked for their reflections. The faculty themselves pushed for us to consider how to build values directly into the tool, spurring our team to integrate these questions into our design and research methodologies. We are coding each user story based on the values underlying each action and pictured on this slide, you can get a peek of our workflow in Airtable. After we code these user stories, we will be running a values exercise with faculty. And now I'll turn it over to Heather, who'll speak more about our user research process. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, to complement the work we are doing with our faculty group, we conducted several focus groups with undergrad and graduate students, in addition to conducting user testing of prototypes with students and faculty. After completing initial interviews with two student interns to gain some valuable background information, we recruited undergrad students for three one hour focus groups and the students were compensated for their time. Uh, we kept these groups relatively small at three to seven participants and we intentionally recruited students from a variety of disciplines. In total, we spoke to 18 undergrads from Duke and Duke Kunshan University about their experiences with Sakai forums Piazza and online discussion in general. The focus groups were held via Zoom and included several formats. We broke up the group into smaller groups based on their experience with Sakai forums and or Piazza and asked them questions about their use of those respective tools. Then we encouraged them to use Jamboard to identify what they liked and disliked about each tool. Here you can see one group's feedback on Sakai forums in Jamboard. We also had larger group discussions about the tools, the online discussion experience in general, and related topics including privacy and gamification. Uh, the focus group methodology was designed by Bendy Fagg, a lead information architect slash UX designer here at Duke who is part of our project team. We are currently recruiting for two rounds of focus groups with graduate students, ideally from a variety of disciplines again. Uh, we will use the same methods as the undergrad focus groups, but some of the questions will be different to account for graduate students experiences as TAs and instructors of record. Again, the grad students will be compensated for their time. All of the information from our focus group research is being collected group by theme and synthesized in reports that we then compare to the other data collected for the project. We will share some of the most common themes across our research a bit later in the presentation. Uh, on another note, another major component of user research in this project was, of course, usability testing of two prototypes uh, by faculty, students, and community members during the design phase. Uh, since we already had a weekly meeting with our faculty group, we sent them into individual breakout rooms to test the first prototype of the tool, then brought them back into the main room to share their feedback with us. Also, we are doing usability testing with undergrad and grad students currently in 20 to 30 minute one on one slots in which we ask them to complete a series of tasks and then ask some follow up questions about the experience. Uh, in addition, we will be doing usability testing with community members very soon. Uh, more information on that at the end if you're interested. Uh, and we plan to test uh, one more prototype with these user groups, uh, but hopefully with different participants later in the summer. Now I'll turn it back to Hannah to talk a bit about some of our findings from all this research. So in designing this tool, we ask ourselves, where does the pedagogical research student and instructor needs overlap? So um, I'll just take you through three quick examples. The need for asking questions and holding more extensive discussions was represented by both instructor user stories and student focus groups. Students in particular spoke about how current tools like Sakai and Piazza work at cross purposes. So on this slide, you can see a current version of Sakai forums where there is not a specific question and answer option. And if you um, look at the next slide, you will see um, pictured a sample screenshot of what we're currently calling forums next to the tool. 
Uh, when users create a new topic, they can choose between asking a question and engaging in Q&A and starting a discussion. Another big uh, thing that was important to both students and instructors was keeping posts organized through tagging. On this slide, you can see some example tags from Ed Discussion and Piazza. Sakai Forums does not currently support tagging posts. So on the next slide, you can see a screenshot of our initial tagging um, layout in the forum's next tool. Instructors can also edit tags for the course to make sure the organizational flow fits the needs of the course. And in order to build on improving organization for the forum's next project, we sought to improve upon the long list of forums and topics that Sakai Forums currently displays. As you can see in this screenshot, Sakai Forums' vertical list of texts can make it difficult to easily find topics important to the user. So in our final screenshot of the forums next, uh, you can see a new left-hand organizational column that displays alongside the topic you are currently viewing. Instructors can pin important topics to the top of this column so that members of the course can easily find them. Individual users can also add topics to something we're currently calling my list so that they can follow along with discussions important to them. And while we have a solid research basis for these changes, we still have some open questions about how we might design this tool as we continue further along this plot process. So <clears throat> what questions remain based on our research? Firstly, we value student privacy and instructors have emphasized this as have students, but what should we show instructors to help them measure their pedagogy? Another topic in the consideration is gamification. Gamification can increase student motivation if integrated properly into a course, but how should we approach this, especially with Sakai's overall goals? And now I'll turn it back over to Heather, who will talk us through some final next steps. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, so our next steps, um, in addition to the graduate student focus groups and the values exercise with faculty, are uh, pulling in experts from Duke to evaluate the accessibility of the tool, as well as maybe help us test that a bit in the usability testing. Uh, prototyping the next iteration of the interface. Uh, we'll leave that to Adrian and Jen and others. Uh, we are planning to do two prototypes in total um, and do additional usability testing on the second prototype. And our plan is to launch uh, the tool in very early fall, uh, so in August. Uh, so with all that being said, uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope this presentation gave you an overview of the holistic work we are doing to develop a new discussion tool for Sakai, uh, which, as you can see, is currently in progress. Uh, now we'd be happy to answer any questions you have about this presentation. And Josh, are there any questions that we missed um, as we were talking? I was I was muted twice. No, there were, there were no questions in the chat. So this this is really okay. good. A couple of people are typing in the shared notes. So this is uh, there's a whole lot of activity there. One person notes that uh, the comments tool is a great way of finding balance between anonymous posting and analytics for the faculty members, and uh, wonders is such a principle possible in forums next. Hmm. I wonder, could that person say more about what they mean about the comments tool or how they would suggest using it? Mm -hmm. If you can identify yourself in the public chat, I'll be glad to uh, unlock you so that you can unmute yourself and explain. Or not, if you decided to, you know. Um, while, while we wait for that, let's, uh, oh, actually, Heather, go ahead. And then we can yeah. move to the next question while the first questioner unmutes. Oh, I'm not sure I'm the person to talk about scale, how this is going to scale, but and as far as the question about the tool being made open source, I believe our current plan is to contribute it back to the Sakai community. So, Tonko was the first questioner. Tonko from the uh, the hotel school in in the, in the Hague. Um, Tonko, you're you're unlocked. You can turn on your microphone and uh, um, and explain further if you want to do that. 
Taco. Taco looks like he's on with headphones only. So while he uh, works out that, that audio issue, uh, Matt writes, the interface looks great. Any thoughts on performance and reaching new scales, i.e. mega courses? Hmm. I think I that the um, tagging that we're looking at is going to be somewhat helpful as far as um, organizing things appropriately so you can tag things for specific groups or questions, which should help narrow stuff down for larger courses. I believe we're also going to be looking, whether it's going to be MVP1 or perhaps a later iteration of this, um, tying this into the uh, groups function, which means that people would be able to subset things specifically for smaller groups, which is how instructors at Duke at least tend to approach uh, the large classes that we have to make them more manageable. Yeah, 100%. I was uh, gonna say, you know, for q and it might not, it might uh, work just fine, but yeah, I think you'd wanna also implement, um, you know, groups and, a fashion probably using tags, uh, if not also, you know, actually defining user groups uh, for more discussion based um, work. And I, I believe that uh, quite a few of the faculty that are consulting on this project and some of the grad students have worked in larger classes. So there there are considerations that we're taking, even though I, I think that it's fair to say that we haven't looked into them as depth in this initial prototype um yet um but you know there, there are things like um how like if someone has like 90 something comments on a post how will that look and how will that be functional that we're thinking about i see also adrian is responding on about performance uh mm -hmm. in the notes saying i'm sweating performance on this all the time believe me <laughs> so lots of paging only pulling data to the front end when clicked into ignite caching that would probably make sense to someone who's not me for that part. <laughs> Adrian, I just unlocked you. Do you want to unmute and uh, elaborate? For those who don't know, Adrian is the person doing the heroic coding required to make this entire thing work. Uh, I've, I've not really got anything more to say about that. I mean, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about performance a lot with it. I mean, it's, it's uh, obviously a big worry. We know how how hard it is to scale forums, especially when things are all loaded into one screen. So I'm thinking in terms of uh, infinite scroll with proper database paging in the back rather than loading all the data up front. And yeah, only loading data, only putting data to the front when you actually click on something, right? So everything comes down sparse first, right? So you get a sparse, a sparse kind of topic, a sparse kind of post, whatever, you know, the, the terminology may change for these things. But you know, you get the idea, people click it, then we pull it. So additional questions uh, from Dave Eveland. Are stats to be relegated to the stats tool instead of embedded in forums next? Uh, we're currently in an ongoing conversation with um, our advisory groups, uh, instructors and so on, about what stats they're going to need and what stats they're going to want. And I think that may affect how they get pulled down. Uh, they've been looking at how stats are handled in ed discussion, for example, and you can get a lot that's very specific to the online discussion for that um, there. And um, I don't believe we ha have, we made a decision on how that's going to play within our tool? I don't believe we have. Um, we know that there are going to be stats that are going to have to be pulled out of here, but we're still deciding where does the need for information versus student privacy, where is that line going to be? For, for what it's worth, we're, we the intent is not to leverage, well, the, the intent is to leverage Sakai's capabilities and not build uh, shadow versions of those capabilities into forums next. So one of the things that's been of interest to us is making sure that uh, we don't replicate what current forums does, which is to maintain its own permissions. The realms tool has to handle that, you know? So I, I think that that's the overarching principle, but how that gets applied in a case-by-case -case basis is being worked out as we go. 
I see a uh, question about questions versus discussions. That's something that is um, handled in Piazza, and many of our instructors have said that they really like having that dis distinction. Questions are um, Q and A. I have this problem, or the instructor is presenting this problem, and the follow-up responses are uh, attempting to answer that uh, specific thing. And instructor can go in and say, this answer is correct, as opposed to a discussion, which is much more wide ranging and people can debate topics back and forth. And um, it's, I'd say it's far less structured, although of course, both of them are going to have to have structure because they are within an interface. But um, it was something that was brought to our attention as, being a thing that a different project does well that they want to bring into Sakai. Yeah, and I think it's a good point that students at first, sorry, Hannah, students at first might uh, not be sure about the difference. So I think that's definitely something, um, you know, we'll make sure to look at for the usability testing. Hannah, I don't know what you were planning to say. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess I just generally speaking about usability testing in terms of instructors, some of the um, team at Learning Innovations had a look at and we've had some student tests. I, I think that um, that is a correct concern that people might not be like, and just in general, in general with what we're calling any of the functionalities of this tool, we need to think carefully about how we name things and also how like we integrate explanations to make things intuitive within the tool um, and which is why I think usability testing is so important and uh, we've had some conversations amongst team members about how to do that so it is definitely something we're thinking about. There's also a question about um, tracking discussions for student participation requirements. I believe we are planning on bringing um, the ability to grade things um, into uh, the tool, I believe in the first version of it uh, that's launching this fall, because instructors have said that in some cases, possibly most cases, if there isn't a grade attached, students won't do it. So they feel that is a necessary part of a tool that's going, if it's going to be useful in their classes. That's also come through in the research, right, Hannah? And and also in the student focus, well, pedagogical research um, in terms of teaching and learning articles and the student focus groups. In fact, students said, I know this is controversial, but I would like forums to be used more consistently and or graded to give me the motivation to do it. It was a breath of honesty. <laughs> yeah, they were very honest. It was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, so an, an additional question has come into the shared notes, which says, sorry if you already covered this, but will forums next enter Sakai 22 as a contrib tool or already core so that it can replace discussions? Um, so I can I can say a little bit and Adrian may, may want to say more. Um, so the plan currently is to have the first version of forums next enter Sakai uh, 22 as a core tool, but not as a replacement for current forums at this moment, you know, so it, it would be a little bit presumptuous and a little bit risky, I think, to replace forums quite that quickly. But the, the hope is that over time that will happen in the same way that, uh, you know, dashboard, for example, might over time replace overview. And there have been other examples of that kind of thing. So uh, Adrian or uh, Earl, if you're here, do you guys want to say more about that? No, I think you've I think you've captured that. Yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's so many. Um, I mean, just just this conversation now. I mean, uh, it makes it really apparent that people have particular requirements around the threaded discussion tool, right? So, so we're kind of, I suppose we're kind we're kind of focusing primarily on the question and answer functionality uh, in the in the kind of first, you know, the first the first version. But I'm 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 hoping we are going to have a threaded discussion functionality in the release for 22 but like like josh says it'd be probably be a, a lot a, a big reach to uh to assume we can just say right you can all just kind of shut off discussions now you know well that's the ambition of course you know yeah we're hoping that um as it becomes part of sakai and more people use it we can get feedback on how it does and doesn't uh, suit their needs and that can affect uh, future iterations 
So it is 1237 Eastern. That means we're about three minutes from the end of the session. Um, I, I wonder, Wilmo, would you like to say a few words about the community input opportunities that are going to be forthcoming in the next few weeks? Um, sure. I, I put a link in the chat. Um, it's in there a couple different ways. There's a bit.ly and then there's just the link to my Calendly um, for appointments. And right now the appointments are scheduled the week of um, June 21st through 25th. So there's um, a number of time slots throughout that week. And, um, and we really want to encourage uh, faculty and users to sign up. So if you want to distribute that link to faculty at your institutions, that would be great. And if they happen to be heavy discussions users, that would be even better. Um, so uh, the idea is just to get some you know, community feedback on uh, you know, the, the tool and to be able to get kind of a first look at the prototype um, for some of the folks um, outside of Duke to provide some feedback on how it would work for the wider community. Um, we may open up additional usability testing opportunities later. Um, so if all the spots fill up and we decide to run another set, um, you know, we'll, we'll let you know. But right now it's just the one week for, um, for the testing. May we only have such a problem that people are banging down our doors to help provide usability test input. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> So there's, there's a follow on question in the shared notes that says, does the usability user have to be familiar with Sakai? So I think that this, this relates to the notion yeah. of getting community faculty involved. Not necessarily. I mean, if they, if they use any sort of um, discussion tool, whether, because I mean, some of the, the folks that have been involved in the testing now have used things like Piazza or Ed discussions. And so, having relevant experience with other similar types of tools would also be um, beneficial, I think. And, and can I just add that when we're doing usability testing um, with graduate students and undergrads, we aren't um, looking for them to be familiar with anything because I think part of what we're hoping is that if you're not familiar with these tools, because you might understand questions if you've seen Piazza, but you might also have no idea if you've not seen Piazza, like getting that viewpoint is also really important you know, I think we had someone who basically uses email to communicate and that's it. And that was a really <laughs> valuable viewpoint. I learned so much from that test. Mm -hmm. All right, it is 1239 and we'll be 1240 momentarily. And with the, the lightning talks coming up at 1245, um, I think we should let that be the last question. I do note that uh, Matt Clare has a note about uh, an, an idea for a transition from forums next, uh, from forums classic to forums next. So thanks, Matt, for putting that in the shared notes. We'll definitely take a look at that. All right, it is 1240. Thanks to all of you for, for being here. Thanks to the, the Duke folks for this pr great presentation and a project about which I'm personally really pretty excited. So thanks, gang. We'll see you all at other sessions in the conference. Next up are the lightning talks at 1245. So those should be pretty interesting. There are six or seven of them. There are, they cover a wide range of projects and a wide range of topics. So definitely come check it out. All right. Thanks all. Take care. See you soon. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.